Hey, what's up, guys? Lalone Top Tens here with another awesome Lalone Top Tens production made just for you. When it comes to food, what is a staple in one country may have considered bizarre in another. One country's classic is another country's exotic novelty treat. One's hot trend is another's time honored tradition. For example, American classics like peanut butter and root beer are considered odd and even disgusting foods outside America. On the other hand, ice cream is one food that seems to be enjoyed worldwide popularity, yet so endless are its variations that there is always some new ingredient or flavor to discover. Airnet List, a bond featuring weird attention grabbing and finish ice cream flavors like lobster, squid ink, or horseradish. In contrast, this list presents weird and unique ice cream flavors that are decidedly not strange in their countries of origin. So, here are 10 of the most popular ice cream flavors you've probably never heard of before. So, alright guys, we're going to start off with number 10 with Lukuma. Now, Lukuma is a subtropical fruit which originated in the Andes and is now grown primarily in Peru and Chile. Depictions of Lukuma on pottery date back to pre-Inca times. Now, Lukuma has thin brownish green um, or yellowish green skin and bright yellow flesh with one to five large brown seeds that resemble the pit of an avocado. It is sometimes called egg fruit because the flesh has the color of a raw egg yolk and the texture of a hard boiled egg yolk. Rather than tasting fruity, its flavor is likely to be maple or butterscotch, which most people actually like. While Lukuma can be used in a number of ways. It is commonly found as an ice cream flavor in Peru, though actual figures don't exist. Some claim that it is the um, the most popular ice cream flavor of all of Peru. Surprising standbys like chocolate and vanilla. It can also be found Neapolitan style, joined with um, vanilla and chocolate or vanilla and strawberry. Due to a soft flesh and tendency to lose water quickly, it is generally considered very unfit for export. Alright, we're going to head on to number 9 now with Mastic. Now, Mastic is an ancient Greek ingredient, a plant resin that is sold in the form of small crystals. These crystals can be crushed into a powder and used to flavor pastries, pudding, ice cream, and lots more. Now, like pretty much every other item on this list, it can be used in both savory and sweet dishes. The powder is mixed with salt for savory dishes and sugar for sweet dishes. Mastic is said to be an acquired taste that is similar to pine needles, something most people, at least Americans, associate more with car air fresheners than with food. Now, in Greece, massive crystals are also referred to as cheers of chiles. On the island of chiles, where the trees are cultivated, farmers make cuts in the trees, allowing the sap to seep out and harden into droplets before falling to the ground. Boom. According to legend, when the Roman Navy had a fleet board at Chalice in 251 AD, an officer named Isidore confused his Christian faith to his commander. Now, when Isidore refused to renounce his faith, he was executed, and all the trees on the south side of the island were said to weep at once. Alright, we're going to head on to number 8 now with Kinaku. Um, Kinaku means yellow flower in Japanese, but this unassuming name belies a uniquely very delicious ingredient. Kinaku is a fine sand colored powder made from roasted soybeans and used primarily in Japan to give a toasty nutty flavor to pastries and sweets. Sometimes it is used throughout a confection. Other times, it is simply dusted on top as a fancy touch. It is often the case with ice cream, and sometimes shaved ice. Kanaku pairs well with vanilla, banana, brown sugar, and even nuts. Kanaku isn't the least bit strange in Japan, where it is said to have preceded sugar. Anyone who knows um, of Jap Japan's love of Kit Kats and their insane array of flavors won't be surprised to learn that Kanaku has been featured in numerous varieties of the candy as well. If you aren't familiar with this phenomenon, here's the gist. The name Kit Kat sounds very similar to the Japanese phrase Kitu Katsu, which translates to you will surely win. This coincidence has contributed to Kit Kat's popularity in Japan, especially as a gift to school children during exam time. Think about it. I mean, that is just nice people. Alright, 
we're going to head on to number 7 now with rose water. Floral flavors are not very popular in the US these days, where flowers generally conjure thoughts of perfume rather than delicious treats. It hasn't always been that way though. In the very first American cookbook, Am Amelia um, si Simmons, um, American Cookery back in 1796, rose water appears in recipes for pound cake, gingerbread, and even apple pie. It is a popular flavoring before vanilla was king. Rose water is exactly what it sounds like, a liquid made by distilling rose petals with steam. Abroad, it is an ex exceedingly common flavoring to this day and can be found in countless international sweets, from Turkish um, baklava to Indian lassi to Persian ice cream. Uh, all right, now, Bastana Sonata, being in classical ice cream, is a Persian or Iranian, if you're more modern, ice cream flavored with rose water and often saffron, vanilla, and or pistachios, which saffron is very expensive. I mean, nobody can find actual saffron now these days. Now, most remarkable about this ice cream is its chewiness and stretchiness, which is the result of the addition of Salab, a thickening agent extracted from a wild orchard. Now, another interesting feature of Persian ice cream is the addition of frozen chunks of cream. Perhaps most unusual of all, sometimes Bastoni Sonata is served scooped into a glass of fresh carrot juice, which is very interesting. All right, we're going to go on to number six now with ubi. Now, ubi is a root vegetable, aka yam or sweet potato, that is a vibrant purple in color and very sweet in flavor. I mean, I've tried sweet potatoes, they're delicious. Now, in the Philippines, ubi is used in all manner of, des or all manner of desserts, including cakes, cookies, and ice cream. Like lukama, it imparts both flavor and color as an ingredient. Ubi also makes frequent appearances in another frozen treat, the traditional Filipino shaved ice cream dessert known as Halo Halo. Halo Halo is a mixture of ice, evaporated milk, and a rainbow of toppings. The Ubi ice cream is becoming more popular and even unfortunately um, hipster due to its eye catching and Instagrammable appearance. It's nothing new in the Philippines. Its unique flavor has been described as an earthy white chocolate or a combination of vanilla and pistachio. Fresh ubi is difficult to find in, in America, but it can be bought as a powder, an extract, or even a paste. Just trust me, guys, try to find it on your own. Alright, we're going to head on to number five now with tamarind. Mmm, delicious. Now, Tamarind may not be considered the prettiest of fruits, but what it lacks in appearance, it makes up for in flavor. It grows in long, lumpy pods and bears a sticky brown pulp. However, that pulp has a delicious sweet and sour flavor that is used in cuisine all over the world, in both dishes both sweet and savory. Well known, one well-known application in U.S. households is in is as an ingredient in Worcestershire sauce. It is also a fairly common ingredient in barbecue sauces. Tamarind can be bought fresh as a paste, powder, or even syrup. Tamarind has been brought from Asia to Mexico in the 16th or 17th century by the Spaniards, and now as a popular and beloved flavor for beverages, which is the one I tried, candy, ice cream, and palatas, which is also known as ice pops in Mexican. Or I should think, really, in Spanish. All right, we're going to head on to number four now with black sesame. Now, black sesame ice cream is to Asia what vanilla ice cream is to the United States. When ground, the sesame seeds become creamy. They add a charcoal color and a rich, nutty flavor to ice cream and other dishes. The depth and complexity of black sesame seeds can also be compared to dark chocolate or coffee, flavors which are and live it by toasting the seeds before using them. In Japan, black sesame seeds are ground and combined with honey to make a paste called nuragoma. This paste can be found in some international markets or specialty stores. The appearance it gives to ice cream is like it's less like the trendy goth ice cream made of charcoal and squid ink, and more like cookies and cream. Despite its appeal, black sesame ice cream doesn't seem to have caught on in the US yet. At least not as well as other Asian ice cream flavors like green tea, red, um, red bean, and ginger. Hmm. All right, we're going to head on to number three now with brown bread. Now you might think about it, bread may not sound like a very appetizing ice cream flavor at all, but keep reading, or I should say, but keep listening. 
Irish brown bread is known as a quick bread because it is risen with a combination of baking soda and buttermilk instead of yeast. Rather than waiting for the bread to rise or proof, it can be quickly assembled and baked. Quick breads have a dense texture. The addition of baking soda is why Irish brown bread is commonly known as soda bread. It is often eaten with butter or cheese. Brown bread, called wheaten bread in Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK, is a simple but hearty staple, historically associated with the Irish poor. Now, it's not uncommon to find it present presented in more de delicate and indulgent ways. Brown bread ice cream can be found all over Ireland and other parts of the UK. Toasty crunchy crumbs of the bread are swirled into ice cream and sometimes paired with complementary flavors like butterscotch. Supposedly, this use of brown bread in frozen treats dates back to Victorian times. Just think about it. Alright, we're going to head on to number two with some of the most obvious ingredients some people may know. Cardamom. Cardamom, like tamarind, grows in pots. Well, that's what most people obviously should know. The pots may be used whole or ground, or the seeds may be extracted and then grounded up. Green cardamom is suitable for um, use in sweet and savory dishes, while black cardamom is considered too overwhelming and smoky for dessert. In the US, it may be best known as one of the warm and spices found in chai tea, famously sold in latte form by Starbucks. India is the largest producer of cardamom, the so-called queen of spices. It is frequently used to flavor Indian ice cream called a kulfi. Pistachio, saffron, and rose water are also used. Much of Kofi's flavor comes from simmering the milk for hours before freezing it to create notes of caramelization. Cardamom has also enjoyed great popularity in Scandinavia um, ever since the Vikings brought it back from their expeditions abroad. More cardamom is consumed in Scandinavia than anywhere in the world, aside from India and the Middle East, obviously, because they love it. Alright, we're going to finally wrap up this list with number one with salmon berries. Salmon berries is the least interesting thing about ATQ. Alright, ATQ. Um, ATQ. Alright, please excuse that pronunciation. I might, um, I might have said it wrong, so. Anyway, sometimes call, um, spelled out as A-K-U-T-U-Q, Akatug, a frozen tree from Alaska. Akatug is a native Alaska word that simply means to stir. Generally, it's made by whipping animal fats by hand and adding sea animal oil and snow or water until the mixture achieves a silky, fluffy texture. The fat is often from caribou, bear, or musk ox, while the oil is from seals or whales. Modern versions use Crisco and olive oil. Non-natives have referred to it as Eskimo ice cream. Blood, meat, and fish eggs have all been added to Attic Um, Attic Tug. Whatever. When it comes to sweet additions, two favorites are blueberry and salmon berry. Salmon berry is com was commonly eaten with salmon by the native peoples of the northwest coast in the area, now known as Alaska, used to be owned by Russia. The um, the berries do not, however, taste like fish, though their flavor can be very greatly from bush to bush and even from year to year. Though very common um, salmon berries have not obtained widespread popularity, uh, possibly because they are described as watery and mushy. Look. So, alright, uh, what is the most craziest ice cream flavor that you heard on this list? Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think is the most tastiest? Also let that know in the comments down below. What is the most disgusting, you might be wondering? Let us know in the comments. Maybe most of you will say salmon berry. Because some some of you may not like salmon like me. Some of you may not like tamarind, which is definitely what I like. Alright guys, well that's pretty much about it for today's top 10. Hopefully you liked this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to Lil Lone Top 10s for more videos like this Monday through Friday. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to support um, Lil Lone Top 10s by sharing this video. Alright, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Take care everyone.